Good afternoon, this is Alan with Affinity Energy. Today, we're gonna to talk about sequence of events recording. So let's jump right in. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how you can use this to record what's happening for your critical power applications like generator controls, automatic transfer operation between a main time to main on a switch gear, or even just looking at how quickly your breakers are opening and closing based on commands or based on trips and faults. Well, we're gonna talk a little bit about why we like the Cyber Sciences SER 3200 and how easy it is to configure and utilize within your EPMS system. We're gonna cut away and we have a, another um, part of the video that's gonna show you the physical unit and how we've wired it up here in our office so that you can get an idea of our particular test scenario. The SER is actually being synchronized using the internet time. We don't have a GPS clock here in our facility, so we've connected up our sequence of events recorder to use that as its basis for time. And then we've wired three inputs to a PLC so that we could generate some changes of state in order to record that. To give you an idea of this, again, along the along the bottom we have four banks of eight, and that's the 32 digital inputs that can be used to monitor everything from, you know, breaker statuses to um, generator statuses to um, different conditions, motor starts and stops. Again, anything that would be important to record with precise time would certainly be something that you would want to connect to a sequence of events recorder. To get up and running, it requires 24 volts. DC for power and an ethernet connection. One of the first things you have to do is set up the IP address. Well, you know, um, you don't even require a computer to do that. You can come into the system. It has a nice, a small, but yet useful display that can be interacted with. We have this connected to our building network. And in order to test it, we had a simple uh, mini PLC here. And what we did is we wired up inputs 9, 10, and 11, and we just set up a PLC to toggle those inputs every five seconds, just to give us some type of a source that was showing that, again, that we're uh, transitioning those inputs from on to off and that we're recording the, the time down to the millisecond. So what I'm gonna show you now is how we access that uh, sequence of events recorder. It has uh, security built in, as you'll see here. I have to enter in security in order to access the unit. So I'm gonna start here, since you're usually out of the box, one of the first things you're gonna do is set up your unit. So you can go over to set up here. There will be a default out of the box IP address, but from the front display of the unit, you can actually set whatever address you need in order to get it on your network. A couple things you're gonna see is communication. So again, if you need to modify communications for whatever reason, you can certainly do that from the web page. Um, you're going to set up what your source of time is. So again, here you can see that it supports many different sources of time. I went ahead and set it up for network time protocol, and then I directed it to a couple of the uh, NIST NTP servers that are on the internet. And I set mine up to basically go out and look for the time every 30 minutes. So after you um, set up your time, you have the ability to come in here and label all of your inputs. And in this case, we have 32 inputs. So here you see the first 16. You can move over and see the next 16 and certainly give it a relevant name based on your application. So I've named a couple of the inputs here when I was playing around with, with setting up the unit. In particular, when you see our test, you'll see that we set up the first three inputs on the second bank of eight. So I've labeled them test input one, two, and three. The other thing that you have the capability to do is you can group your inputs into some groups that could get used for you know, organizational purposes. In this case, I just went ahead and I, I set up two of the inputs in group one and one of the inputs in group two. And the groups are used for data logs. You can actually assign inputs to a specific data log. And what that does is anytime one of the inputs that's assigned to that data log changes state, whether it turns on or turns off, that particular event gets recorded. And then within the data log, you will see what the other inputs that were assigned to that group were doing when one of the particular inputs changes state. Now we're gonna move on. So 
The SER device that Cyber Sciences makes is a very powerful diagnostic tool. It doesn't necessarily require you to have you know, a, an EPMS system or a BMS or a SCADA system in order to take advantage of recording events in high speed. One thing I want to mention is that for this particular sequence of events recorder, the, uh, the resolution of time is down to one millisecond. So certainly if you have an application that requires better re resolution than one millisecond, you're probably going to be looking at um, another type of solution. But considering that one cycle of electricity is 16 milliseconds, one millisecond is pretty good in terms of time. Looking at the monitoring page, you can see that there is one input that's on, and that's because we had a routine running in our test PLC, and when we stopped it, it was in the mode where that particular input was left on. For each input, you might want to see how many times that particular input has turned on, and you can reset the counters for each of the inputs. Maybe you're going to use this in order to look at doing um, scheduled maintenance on, say, circuit breakers, where you know that after a certain number of cycles of operation, meaning opening, closing, that a breaker needs to be um, have maintenance performed on it. Well, what you would do is, you know, you might base your maintenance based on uh, calendar date or time since last maintenance. You might base it on number of operations, and then once you perform your maintenance, certainly you can do a reset of your counter. This is again the, the primary screen that shows you what's happening on the overall unit. It's going to show you when each input has changed states and it'll show you whether it was from on to off or off to on. And then it also can show you the time, which is the delta time between when it, uh, the previous change of state and the current change of state. So for example, right here, if you look at event 8184 and 8185, you're going to see that there's actually 21 hours that have went by since the last time that that particular input changed state. So let's say that when you get your sequence of events recorder set up, you don't have a PLC available, or maybe you're not in a position where you're able to operate your equipment in order to uh, do some checkout of the programming of your EPMS or your SCADA system. Well, that, that's not going to be a big problem because you have what's called a simulation mode. So a simulation mode, what it allows you to do is override what the sequence of events recorder is doing and essentially put it in a mode where you can force the inputs on and off. Doing a, a simulation test is nothing more than, again, picking a particular mode of operation. You know, you can have auto mode. and auto mode, all it's going to do is it's going to sequence through and turn each of the inputs on and off in, and you can see here on the text, one millisecond intervals. So again, what would that look like? You know, if we started this and we said yes, you can see now the screen is scrolling and you can see that it went through all 32 inputs, one millisecond apart. It also highlighted that all of those inputs had a red box around to show that they were forced. Now the, um, the inputs themselves, here you can see there was a system test that was done and that system test was recorded and you can see each of the inputs here. So you can see that we started that test at about 2.56 and 36 seconds, a very quick way in order to verify the operation of your sequence of events recorder. Now you could do this in a manual mode as well, where you would select the manual, you would hit start test, okay. You can pick, okay, all of the current inputs are forced off. So let's say I wanted to force you know, input number one on, that's merely, well, I, I accidentally picked two. But if I picked one and I apply this, then again, we can go back over here to our monitoring. Based on our simulation, all of the inputs have a visual indication to show that they are in a uh, simulation or in a test mode. And you can see that the box is filled in on the first two inputs to indicate that both of those inputs are on. So we talked earlier about you know, we're recording within a counter for each input how many times it turned on and then off. So again, you can do a couple things. You could reset individual um, inputs or you can reset all of the inputs. So that's it for the web page of this. I'm going to jump over here and just again want to show you um, how easy it is and, and that it's tightly integrated with uh, EPMS system. Within our facility, we have a power monitoring expert set up. And uh, Cyber Sciences has a, 
an excellent relationship and it's been a, a long going relationship with Schneider Electric and within both Power Monitoring Expert and Power Skate Operations, the ability to integrate their SER devices is built in and it's a standard template. If I want to drill down into that and take a few, uh, you know, look at some of the details, I can click on that. And I'm get, going to get presented with screens that look very similar to what you saw on the web page. So again, you know, but it's built right into your PME system or your power monitoring expert system. You've got the ability to look at the statuses here. You've got the ability to look at the counts, so how many times that particular input has operated. You have the ability to look at an event log. So I'll click over here and I can look at the event log and I get the same event log that you would see as if you were on the SER unit itself via the web page. We have a, a PLC and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it into a mode where it's going to generate, it's going to sequence inputs 9, 10, and 11 on and off and it's going to do that every five seconds. So what you'll see now is you're going to see here, if you pay attention at test input 1, 2, and 3, you're going to see that on jump between 9 and then five seconds later it'll go to 10 and then five seconds later it'll go to 11. And so again, and as that's happening, you can see that the counter is increasing here. So again, this is being recorded. You'll see that if we go over to the event log, you're seeing the particular timestamp down to the millisecond of the change of state from on to off, on and then off to on. So again, that's being properly recorded. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about is we talked about the notion of these data logs. You can assign the inputs to a data log. So let's say you wanted to monitor on a double-ended substation the main time, the main, and the statuses of those breakers, whether they were open, closed, or tripped. Well, you can certainly assign them to a data log, and then once they're assigned, for example, let's say that you had a rule that said you would never parallel two sources on a double-ended substation. So that should mean that at any particular point in time, you should never have the tie closed while both mains are closed. So what you could do here is you put your status for your main tie and your main, so your breaker A main, breaker B main, and you put your tie in, all you would be looking for is to see if there were any occurrences where all three were closed at the same time. That would be very easy to see in this type of data log and wouldn't require to go through an event log and, and certainly look for the occurrence of both uh, all three breakers being closed simultaneously. So whether you want to use the web page of the SCR or whether you want to use your uh, power monitoring expert system, you can set the uh, reset the counters. You know, if you want to make sure that uh, people aren't going in and accidentally resetting your counters, there's security around resetting um, and writing to your devices. So that's it for today's uh, video on sequence of events recording. Thank you for joining me. I hope you guys found some um, beneficial information. Like I said, when you don't have a PLC, you don't have a protective relay or even um, an option for a fault recorder, a sequence of events recorder by Cyber Sciences combined with the PME, Power Monitoring Expert System, is a very powerful tool. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and uh, we'll look forward to catching up with you next time.